Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! Welcome to Street Smart Swing, guys. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I'm going to be analyzing another swing dance video <clears throat> to give you my professional opinion as a judge on who I thought won it. But I will give you a caveat here. Last night I went to bed hacking and coughing and having all the drainage come down in my sleep, and my wife basically kicked me out of the room and I had to sleep on the couch because I kept waking her up. <clears throat> and I didn't even realize in my sleep that I was getting sick. And now I feel like I have a little bit of the flu symptoms. So I will not be as enthusiastic, um, but I will not allow my terrible feelings to cloud my judgment. Oh no. So how do we get into a competition like this when solo jazz really isn't defined clearly by a lot of people who are experts at the genre? The way I look at it is from a different perspective. I've been dancing for 30 years. I know I look like I'm young. I'm 40. I'm still young. And most of my dancing was in the improvisational dance forms of the time. A lot of New Jack Swing, a lot of b-boying, a lot of hip-hop. Um, and one of the significant differences that I noticed coming into swing was that hip-hoppers move their upper body a lot more than swing dancers. And um, you can find that happening from 1970s to the current day. <clears throat> a lot of vintage dance forms focused on the legs because of the tap influence on society and with the Hollywood movies, Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers. And so you can see at that time they did not do a lot of aggressive movements with the upper body. And I like seeing that dichotomy. I don't want to see a bunch of just hip hoppers doing swing dancing. And, you know, me, me trying to judge it fairly <clears throat> when it actually doesn't look like it's part of the time. The, the best part about both genres is that they both have this spirit of creativity and ingenuity with dancers. And I want to see which dancers can get out there without doing a bunch of choreography. I'm going to be looking at how they improvise to the music because many of the solo musicians are doing that. Saxophone player, the trumpet, trombone, they get out there and they improvise. So I'm going to look for the balance of craftsmanship plus that ingenuity of improvisation. I'm actually going to mark it down lower if there's a lot of choreography because it just bugs me. Like anybody can just put together some stuff if you can dance by yourself and get out there and, and nail it on beat every single time. So this is what I'm going to be looking for. Uh, don't mistake my low tone and non-aggressive excitement as uh, disdain for what I am seeing, I'm just trying to preserve my voice. So let's get into it. And here we go. <clears throat> All right, a snowball. Here we go. <clears throat> this is really telling that the rhythm of the song isn't very fast, and I like that. <clears throat> Alright, so who I'm liking right now, so far, <clears throat> is the girl in the red dress. Her name's Laya. She's not rushing. She's not afraid to dance in swing time, and of course I don't see a whole lot of choreography. These are memorized moves, once you solo jazz for a long time you just know these moves, but I don't see like she's too rushed. A little sip of my warm and cozy.
a good warm up. Give it up for him, everybody. Please start it up for us. Got my paper. <clears throat> Get my judgment face on. As a little intro, you'll hear it. Okay, now so far, gas is winning, upper body's quiet, trying different things. Yes! Yes! <laughs> That's what I mean. Different. Syncopations, control. Very good. Excellent dancing. So again, great dancing, but I would suspect a lot of that was choreographed. And the way I like to judge, I, I'm harsh on the choreography. <clears throat> okay, let's see what's next. Too. That was quick. <clears throat> yes, okay. I, I, what I like about her dancing is she is in swing time. She's not rushing. And again, it looks choreographed, so I have to take some points off that. But so far, she's, she's my winner for the control craftsmanship part of the dance. Yeah. All right, he's my winner for creativity. <clears throat> and now what I'm looking for is a balance of both. I got strong dichotomy. But now I need to see, I want to see both together. Yes! <clears throat> now that, I can tell you right now, that was improvised. <clears throat> yes! Ah! That's good! I wish he had more time. He, he chose to dance to what was happening and not just come out and do whatever. All right, all right. Man, <clears throat> let's see if they uh, have an all skate. Give it up for them, everybody. You're fine, this right here.
Sounds like a Sonic the Hedgehog song. <laughs> Contestants at door number one. Actually, more surprising than I thought. Although I was right. I, excuse me, ugh, got my little snot rag with me. <clears throat> As I mentioned before the commencement of this video, um, I wasn't going to be looking favorably. Uh, as much as I normally do on just choreography and that's because when you're competing at this level everybody can come out with some cool sets. If it was a choreography contest, then I would like, you know, to judge a solo jazz choreography contest where they have a song and they could just make up what they want to every perfect beat and every shape that is perfectly contrasted with another. But in this type of competition, I really wish it was more focused on the Jack and Jill type format where it's ingenuity. We don't know what's going to happen with each dancer and they don't actually know what's going to happen until they have inspiration hit them at that moment and they choose to embellish something or exercise some restraint in relationship with the music at that moment in time and so uh i got three winners <laughs> my first winner for control and again that represents the craftsmanship part of the dance um where i can look at her and go yep yeah, i know that move Yep, I've seen that one too. Oh yeah, they're doing vintage dancing. Looks like hip hop, but it's totally vintage. And I would have to pick Laya for that. She uh, really embodied the vintage part of what I was looking for. And that is just good craftsmanship, knowing how to do those moves and doing them in swing time is a big deal to me. I know a lot of dancers can just do the moves and do them on the beat, but it's on the beat. They're not actually swinging the moves. They just do them like on top of the beat and everything looks rushed and fabricated. They look like background dancers instead of Janet Jackson in the middle, right? You want to be Janet Jackson. You don't want to be the background dancers. And so Laya crushed it for that. She um, clearly knew how to imitate a lot of the vintage moves that has been created before. So for me, she's my third place. My second place, I'd have to go towards the one that was the most creative for me. And that the most creative uh, is really what's going to push the dance forward. In fact, most of our vintage dances uh, or our vintage moves that are in vernacular jazz are from people, like individuals who decided to come up with the moves. So they, at first, they were someone's artistic expression, but later people begin to imitate those moves put names to the moves and today we still do some of those jazz moves and so uh the dancer for me who really kind of pushed it a little bit further in a, in a direction that said more individual expression more ingenuity syncopated rhythms quirkiness and weirdness that goes to gas for me that was my favorite dancer because that's the spectrum that i value the most which is creativity Right now, what I wish there could have been a little bit more of on his, and I probably would have had him at first, is if he had a little bit more of what Laya had, which is a little bit more balance of the traditional moves <clears throat> or even silent pauses where I could appreciate all those syncopations in a way that they looked, of course, like improvised, but they also looked like they were in complete control all the time. And I don't feel like I, I got that all the time, but I got enough to say he was second place. And I think that's the beauty of cre uh, creativity is in judging, you can be a little bit more forgiving if it's a new idea, hasn't been seen. Usually it's like, we can't really judge it accurately at that moment in time. Usually it has to do with the timing of that movement, right? And generations later will be influenced by it 
and put a name to it. So I, I'm a little bit more hard on those who have a lot of artistic expression and they lack the control of it. So, um, but I'm also forgiving when they have the creative expression that no one else is doing. So that's why he gets second place for me. Now the first place person is someone who has to balance both, right? Can't be a whole bunch of choreography, can't just be a whole bunch of improvisation with no real control or no reference point to something that's come before. And the dancer that did that for me actually sacrificed a bit of their set um, and did the thing I was wanting him to do, which was listen to the music and dance to the music and, and amplify what I'm hearing so I could see it visually. And he did that. Sorry, I get excited about it. And his name was Alexi. So in my mind, he got first place, not just because of his sets. In fact, I didn't like his style of solo jazz. I preferred Gas's style. I didn't like Alexi's style, but it doesn't matter if I like the shapes. I appreciate if they're organized in a way where they're respectful to the craft uh, that was created by others. If they have new ideas, I'm respectful of that. And if there's a tremendous amount of vulnerability, meaning are you just simply improvising in that moment? Now, in my mind, from what I saw, I didn't see a tremendous amount of creativity in the sense of new shapes that I haven't seen, but I saw a lot of control. I saw a lot of traditional shapes, uh, much like what Laya did, third place person. And I saw a balance of that, but I also saw some creativity uh, in a way that amplified the music. His second set um, was really great because he was doing moves and I could see him hold back a little bit because the music was doing something that we could all hear. And he sacrificed his whole set to mirror what was happening uh, audibly so that the, the audience could appreciate what they're hearing and they can also appreciate his dance moves. And I wish they would have gave him more time because he had a break session and the music and he was able to do these hand things like that and then he came in and was like Ugh, and he was doing stuff but the, for me that's the essence of solo jazz if if you can be in the moment and sacrifice your pre-programmed idea and let the feeling come out and bless us with something visually that we haven't seen because this is really what the musicians are doing that's how the music was created and for me that's how the dance should be is that it shouldn't just be fabricated stuff that's so appealing and perfectly organized and present it with with flawlessness that's not jazz jazz is vulnerable you got to have a little bit of structure and you got to have a lot of creativity and it's all about what you do in that moment someone will say well jamie that's not true we have choreography yes we do we do have choreography and yes you can choreograph jazz steps but in my mind it's still not jazz because it's not improvised it's it's choreographed jazz <laughs> which is a jazz performance, which is okay too. Some people like that, but I came from a world where everything was choreographed, stage performances, so none of, nothing's really hard for me to do in swing. It's not as difficult as other art forms like hip hop, where you're hitting every single beat and moving and gyrating and doing spinning on the ground. That's much more difficult than holding restraint based on what the music's doing and the tonality of the music and the positioning of your body to make it look like it's more controlled and it's a tease. That's hard. It's hard not doing everything. And so great job to Alexi in my mind. He got first place because he was able to balance all those things that I feel are necessary, but he didn't even fit all the things that I personally liked. So that's fair to me to say, hey, look, great job. Gas was my favorite dancer and my favorite craftsman was Laya. She was able to show me what solo jazz is if I was coming in from the outside and I wanted to know what's vintage dancing. Bam! She showed me a lot of the moves that as a professional I can call out and say, yep, I know those. So that's who I thought won this competition. Who do you think should have won this competition? I'm getting myself excited. I feel like I'm getting better, but I'm not. It's all a ruse. I'm going to be sick again if I don't relax. Mm. But that's who I thought won this competition. Let me know in the comment sections who you thought was your favorite dancer. If you're you know, scared to do these kind of competitions, I would encourage you just to do it. And you want to compete for the right reasons. If you're wanting people to just simply like you, um, I wouldn't compete. 
because people may not like you, <laughs> right? You can't make everybody happy. But if you actually love the dance and you're working on very specific things like learning how to improvise and get better at that, I would encourage you to do it, uh, it being a competition because it will put uh, pressure on you to actually do something in that moment. And it's good if you can feel the fear of that and actually do something constructive with your art. Um, that's what it's all about. And I encourage you to do it. It's not easy. Um, there's a lot of pressure. You mess up. It's forever on the internet, right? But it's helped me throughout all the years of training and dancing to put myself out there, to put necessary contained pressure to, do, to bring the best out of me. So you can't win every competition. Not every judge is going to like your style and not everybody is going to explain with clarity how they actually assess dancing. I like to so that there is no confusion. No one can get it twisted with me. And I will tell you when it's very subjective as opposed to the objective things that I value about swing music and swing dancing that will bring honor to those who came before us and also create liberty for those dancers living today. So anyway, I encourage you guys to get out there, take competitions, take swing dance classes, find some of these teachers, take classes from them. They have a lot of great value. Um, if you want to learn some of those vintage dances, I'd encourage you to check out some of my courses below. I've got over 25 courses. You can learn a lot of the vintage routines and even some of the modern routines that uh, some of my peers have taught me in private. Um, and I'm able to share those with my audience. So it's really fun to have that and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So with that being said, if I don't see you in class online, hopefully I get to see some of your comments in the next reaction video. I was about to sneeze, but it's a fake one. All right, see you guys.